if there's people coming. If, if not, well, this video will stay here, as you guys know. Um, but I, I wanted to share that, um, well, I'm first of all, First and foremost, my page started because I really wanted to help out families. Um, when you're young and you're about to get married or um, when you get married, uh, you don't realize all the work that comes within um, having a family and what it is to be in a family. Now, I understand that there are some that they're not able, of course, to have a husband or or sometimes uh, your children passed away. I understand those things also. Um, so, but this page is for everybody. I truly believe um, in union, in different opinions. And I believe that we can reach peace if we know how to speak and we know how to uh, communicate and understand different situations going on in our lives. Um, with that being said, I also love homeschooling. It's my passion. Now, I am a business person. I'm a businesswoman. I, my parents introduced us very young, myself and my siblings, to the business world. So originally, um, business. But when I had my kids, the mother instinct started to kick in, right? And I started to feeling like it started started to feel like I needed to homeschool my children. I saw it in my aunt. I saw the children growing up, and that's what called me to uh, become a homeschooler. Um, so homeschooling, like I have mentioned in some other videos, it's not an easy task, but it's also not hard that you cannot do it because you're not a teacher and you're not going to be able to accomplish what you have uh, in mind for your family. Um, it's all about goals. What would you like to do for your family? It's all about what you want to accomplish for your family. So you have to envision what would you like to do with your family, uh, with your kids, and you have to envision and think of it because you're going to be the main person bringing that to your family. And homeschool is going to be uh, bring union. It's going to bring uh, peace of mind in a lot of areas where there is not any peace of mind now. Um, so that's the beauty of homeschooling. Now, I also want to mention that I am not trying to convince anyone to homeschool because I understand that that's for some people that is not possible. And then for some people also, um, it may be that you're going through a hard time right now because of the COVID-19, right? Um, so it doesn't mean that you have to, um, that I'm trying to convince you for it. No, this is my passion and I like sharing about it and I love it. Um, and you're going to hear me sharing about it because I just love it. Um, so that's, this is the most, even though this is a lifestyle blog, this is the one that I'm going to talk about the most, um, homeschooling and business are my passions and what I love. And when I say business, I don't believe in being a business person that is pushy or doing things that, you know, they're not supposed to, right? Uh, I don't believe in that. So, uh, like I said, I don't see a lot of people uh, here, but um, this video will stay here um, so you guys can watch it later. And I, I will also look at the, uh, to the comments later too. So thank you for being here. And then here it goes. So first things first is that you have to know that when you homeschool, that homeschooling, it's a process, okay? So you don't be hard on yourself, especially the first year. The first year will be crazy. Um, so don't be hard on yourself. Uh, it's gonna be super crazy uh, trying to understand everything and grasp everything in one year because you're just getting used to um, all these things. So, it is hard enough to make the change and then trying to focus on so many uh, different areas at the same time. So 
home first homeschool year will be crazy will be chaotic will be all these things in it but just know that within the future you're gonna know and you're gonna understand a lot better all the things that you uh wish to understand within the first year um and then give grace to yourself it's important that you give grace to yourself always 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 give grace to yourself um and don't expect things to be perfect um don't mimic uh school in your in your home don't do that it's not possible um so if you're coming from the public system and trying to homeschool now please de school first that's the most important thing uh what what do i mean by de schooling it means that you're not going to copy uh public school so you see that your children go to school for eight hours right straight um in homeschool that's not the case depending on their grades there will be uh two either two hours or three um and then when they they grow older it's four to five so the hours get uh smaller so it's very important that you don't think that your children are going to be in homeschool the whole day um uh, you will overwhelm them and they will want to quit um and you will not work so uh you have to have that peace of mind that is not uh, a public school system at home right now that is happening where the public system is trying to come at home but don't confuse uh those things okay we can talk about that on another uh q a um so one of the questions was do you continue to teach your children a curriculum over the summer uh the answer is no i don't do a curriculum because I feel like my brain needs a break and my kids brain need a break uh, for the whole year, right? We've been at school for 36 weeks um, in a school setting for 36 weeks. Um, so that's enough for them and we need a little break. Um, so right now we're starting our break. We started this Monday. Um, so yeah, um, you're gonna see a lot of that uh, happening right now so and then or do you do something different yes in summer we do do things differently we don't follow our curriculum so what we do is that we just reinforce um areas that i see that they need to uh work on for example maybe their math facts they're not where they should be um or maybe um they don't, they don't understand a letter or they don't know how to uh, read it, the sounds, right, and all that. So then we'll go over that. And then the main focus is reading. Uh, we read a lot. So that is the main focus during that time. Um, the other question is, do you guys take vacation breaks? Yes, we do. We take vacation breaks. Um, because like i mentioned before your brain needs a break uh, you cannot be um, school mode all the time and it's healthy for you and your children um so we do take thanksgiving and christmas um i'm still with the charter but I'll, I'll be filing a psa this year but i um i follow the charter uh, uh schedule a bet not fully because i have always work so the way we do it is that we homeschool four days a week we take a day off this year i will be doing things differently so i'm going to be planning my year with you so you can understand uh most of most of the states um they're they they go around 175 days to 180 days of what your uh your school your children need to be in school um, so you follow that, the 36 week, uh, the 180 days, but I will share um, the actual site where you need to see what are the hours that your children need to be um, in, uh, in school. So then uh, with that being said, you get to choose when you want to start your week. I'm going to try to 
explain it general here, but it's something that needs to be visual because I heard a lot of uh, ways of planning on YouTube and things like that, and it doesn't make sense. Um, so I'm visual too, so that's why. So if you start, for example, on June 15, right? You study from June 15 to uh, four weeks in a row, and then we're going to take a week off, okay? So, but I have to make sure that the 36 weeks are there, okay? So I have to look at uh, Easter time. I have to look at Thanksgiving time, and I have to look at Christmas time, and then how much days we can spend. And I have to make sure that during this year, there, there are 36 weeks uh, filled in with schoolwork. Um, the next question is, I love tips for first time homeschooling families with key, with kids on IEPs. Um, this one, I think the best tips I can give you, first, I want to make clear that I don't have children with IEPs, but I do know a lot of families that do this. Um, so I just want to make that clear. Um, so the tips that I can give you for that is that you need to have a lot of patience um, and focus and dedicate the time to your children because you are able to. Um, and this goes with the other question too, that it says my child has an IEP and she's intellectually disabled, but more socially adapted. Can I still homeschool her? Definitely. This is the best option you could have chose, chosen for your children. Um, definitely you can homeschool her. You're going to be able to dedicate the time. Um, so I'm answering both questions. Uh, you're going to be able to dedicate the time to your children and keep put that effort into each uh, area that that child needs work on. So, and you're going to see it personally and you're going to uh, be directed to your child and you're going to know what's going on there and where do they need help. It's not general. You don't have to worry about your child uh, being put on the side and um, and let, let other children uh, put up the focus on other children and not your child, right? Um, so, you, you, you are able to focus on your children specifically in the area that they need help on. So the tips for IEPs is just patience, uh, be kind. I know that you already are uh, because you're in that position. And I, I feel like it's just you understanding that this is the best choice for them. Um, and it's just you going uh, with the flow of your homeschool, depending on how your child is going to be. And depending on how they're going to react to different situations, then you're going to start seeing of ways of how to uh, treat the, your, the, those children. Um, and also, I think the important thing here is not trying to follow schedules um, because you're going to try to follow the schedule to the T, right? Um, and don't, okay? With an IEP, don't. I'll take it slow and make sure you. Uh, you do follow them, but follow it, but just, how do I explain? Not overwhelmingly and overwhelming your children, right? That's the most important thing. Um, and going back to that one, that if as she's more socially adapted for Heidi Napoli Mins, uh, I'm probably uh, said your name wrong, but I, for her, I think that it's all you, mom. You have to research, and I don't mind researching uh, for um, places where she can attend classes. I don't mind helping you with that. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of places where your children can go and get socialized. Um, I think nobody really understands how big our community is now. It's not as before. And so there's so many places that children can attend one day a week, two days a week, um, where they can go to parks, where they can go to field trips, and they can do so many things together. There's so many groups. If you're doing it with a charter, you're going to have uh, charter groups. Uh, if you're doing a PSP, the PSP takes care, the umbrella takes care of all of that, field trips, everything that you need, it's there. Um, 
So don't worry, uh, Mama, if you're worried about your children uh, being left out or not being socialized, there are a lot of groups out there which in which you will get the help to get your children socialized. So I say it's all you because you're going to have to do a lot of research and make sure that the uh, social part is included um, in your week, uh, weekly planning and make sure that they do, they do get that interaction with other children. Um, and I am gonna try to, uh, to bring a mom to speak more about IEPs, um, someone who's more experienced in these areas uh, so they can help you more. Um, so hopefully soon I'll get to have someone here to speak about that. Um, also, what do you do to balance it? This is Sylvia Castillo. What do you do to balance it all? How do you stay organized? How far along do you plan? Okay, so to balance it all, the <laughs> question, well, I don't balance it all by myself. I don't, okay? So the way I do it is I share my dreams with my family. I let them know my outcomes. And it doesn't mean that it's all officially, oh, come guys, sit down, I wanna speak to you about this. It doesn't mean that. It just means that I think that I share with them often. So there are gonna be things that you are gonna um, delegate to others in your family. Uh, you have to see what they like to do because also you don't wanna delegate things that they don't like to do. Um, so you have to delegate. I think a lot of moms, we have that, uh, mentality that we have to do it all. And honestly, we don't, we don't have to do it all. Um, so you have to, uh, delegate things to others in your family. Uh, that includes going grocery shopping. Uh, that includes things that will take away from your time. So this question is, right, it comes to uh, work and homeschool. So that's what it is. I delegate a lot of things and I also um, organize by planning my week. I do not do a full plan right now because until this day, I haven't find a planner that really gives you all that you need for the working uh, business, homeschool mom out there. Uh, and also with the disease, right? I haven't find that yet. So right now what I do is that I do a to-do list for myself at the start of the, of the week, okay? And that to-do list are, is the one that I have advertised here sometimes that I am working on, which is something that will be coming up um, in the summer, I hope. So. Uh, there will be a planner coming from a Familia Foundation, but it will be a planner for homeschool working mamas. And also the homeschooling mamas can choose if they want to take out the working part and just be uh, focus their planner on only their homeschooling and work um, because work home. What's it called? The work from home, right? Because it's laundry, it's cooking, it's so many things that you can go crazy. Um, so even that in itself, it's already another job. So, uh, so I am working on that. But the things I do is just I create a to to do list for me and goals that I have personally for business and my kids. And I then I write down the grocery shopping, all, all these things, because even though my husband helps me with the grocery shopping, I do provide him with the list of the things that he can bring. Um, so that's how I stay organized. Now, when, if you are doing a business, you have to, understand that you have to be lenient. Um, my thought right now is if you see uh, dishes and, and if you see dishes in the kitchen and it's annoying you, right? Um, my thought is ignore it. You have to ignore and you have to know your goals because your goals 
during that day is probably make a phone call to a client, um, do a video that you have to post or things like that. So just focus on that. You know, your goal is to get that over and get it done. So it's um, take care of your homeschooling, your business, and then chores. Okay. So that is what I can uh, share with you. And I also, it, it, and also the question says, how far along do you plan? So to me, I use um, curriculums that, that, are, that already have some sort of planning uh, for you. So that's what I use to be able to do the three of them together. So, um, I plan probably a year for homeschooling. Um, and then for my business, I, there's different plannings that I do, uh, and set the day probably I, I plan three months ahead. Okay. So that's what I do. Um, how do you balance working and homeschooling? So to balance working and homeschooling, you have to uh, be able and want to invest in a lot of things that are provided to you out there for your children. Um, and like I said, it's not going to look perfect. Um, there's going to be chaos. Um, there's sometimes that you're going to be in a meeting and your children, uh, someone starts crying or they start, they start fighting out of nowhere. So you have to um, be lenient, understand the situation and try to handle it the best you can. So it's controlling self-control at that moment when all those things are happening. Um, so how do you balance working? You could do uh, three things, okay? You can get help within your family, okay? Someone to help you um, and for them to take care of the children at that moment. Uh, number two is gather around a lot of um, things that kids can do for themselves, like Play-Doh, um, different things that they can do for themselves that they don't have to, they don't need you to be working right there with them. Uh, coloring, uh, my children don't like coloring that much, but well, my daughter does. She likes um, all, everything that has to do with art, but um, my son doesn't. So I find out probably provide them with Legos and provide them with things and tell them I need you to do this while mommy is working. Um, and then technology. Don't be afraid of using technology. I know there's a lot of guilt in that, but I say if you monitor that technology, right? If you monitor uh, how long they've been on it, you should be fine. Now, there are going to be hard days where you're going to probably go over um, the, the, the usage but then the next day you take it back again. You know, you start with your goal, which with whatever your goal is. Maybe you just want one hour with them in the, in, in the uh, screen. So then that's your goal, right? Controlling that area. Um, and then how, that's how you do the working. And then you set hours for homeschooling. So don't think of them doing next to each other. You could but it would be a lot of stress. So I say either you homeschool work or work homeschool. And within uh, the homeschooling part is, you know, just change your hat, right? You did the working hat, let's change it. Now it's time to homeschool and, uh, and focus on that time for the homeschooling part. Um, if you're going to be having calls, maybe when they, you, you already put your children to maybe, uh, what do I say, copy numbers or whatever you put their assignment to be, then, then there you can choose, um, then there you can choose to call and, and, and return the calls that you need for, uh, at that moment, right? Because sometimes there's emergencies. Um, the other question is, is it better to choose from jog, uh, probably I'm going to pronounce these names wrong. I hope, I hope I'm not messing them up. <laughs> is it better to choose structure curriculum first for the newbie? 
Okay, is it better to choose structure curric structure curriculum first for the newbie? Uh, yes and no. I never uh, bought a box curriculum because I wanted freedom, okay? Um, I didn't want to feel stressed. I didn't want to feel like I had to uh, accomplish that on that day because if not, I'm behind and I don't, I don't want the stress uh because it, it can bring stress when you're working and doing so much so that's just me i i didn't uh buy a box curriculum there's a lot of out there i actually got this catalog yesterday from the rainbow rainbow resource it's huge it has so much here so i know i already share um with a lot of you the rainbow resource but also uh you could go online but this is so good like this book it's a catalog you can request it and it is so good because it goes um explaining every single curriculum and what is it for and they even have a chart where you can look at what kind do you want to use so um, this is great for new homeschooling families. They're not sure where to start. They don't know what they want for their children. So you can go and start reading on this and see what's the best for your child. Um, so it all depends on what you are looking for and what your goals are. Like I said before, I don't mind going over this with you and helping you out. When I started homeschooling, I really looked for help and I didn't get it anywhere. Um, I did not. So uh, people will share things here and there, but it, it, there, there was not one person who will walk through this journey, uh, stay with me, helping out, right? So I'm here for that. Um, how do you choose the curriculum? Is the curriculum set for year round? uh the curriculums are not set for year round you have to set it up for a year round um like i said i will be uh planning with you uh the year round so all i'm gonna need from everybody and i'm gonna say it after two it's a, a print uh calendar from 2020 to 2021 and we'll plan a year round um also uh let's see the next question is from Rina. scheduling what subjects activities do you teach daily versus weekly or even monthly specifically with elementary age okay um we do monday through thursday and we do um language arts math science, social studies, uh, and then we do electives. Now I said Monday, Monday through Thursday. My children are, uh, this past year, they were uh, in kindergarten and in second grade. So uh, the way we plan this is there's two days I give them science and social studies. And I um, kind of, and the other days I show them videos and things like that um, on science and social studies. So it will be so overwhelming for me, but that's how we plan it. Um, activities, I do whatever is on the book for them. I also plan other types of activities for them to do. Uh, Pinterest is, is always a great source, like you, everybody knows. Um, so they always have really good things right there that you could do with an elementary age. Uh, but things that you could do with your kids are like a volcano. It's very easy. Vinegar, baking soda. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I have that activity in, in my uh, website too. If you want to look, look into it. Uh, create Play-Doh. Um, not too long ago, we bought uh, this game, this thing called yuckology um and it's pretty nice because right there you get to make slime and you make different slime and putties and things like that with things that you have at home like using a banana 
uh, using different things. So you have that right there. And then it's fun for the kids. Um, they get to do something different every day. Um, there are days that I just let my kids do whatever they like. Like yesterday, they were trying some experiment by themselves and they had so much fun because the sperm came out uh, kind of nice. Uh, the bubble uh, stick in, in, the, in their hands. So they had fun with that and they were creating it all by themselves and then they enjoyed it and it was okay. Um, uh, but I will be planning with you this upcoming year. And that's my focus this year that I will be planning with you. I will be doing a lot of planning on the uh, year round um, setting. And I will also be doing a lot of uh, subjects and activities that you can teach your kids, uh, kids daily. Uh, and then um, in big projects, I only focus uh, one, one project a week. Um, so I just do one and monthly, I I haven't never thought about it monthly. So I, I, I always do one big project a week. And then um, that's a good question. Monthly? No, I haven't thought about that. So um, specifically with elementary age, right? So yeah, my children are in elementary. So I hope that what I share has helped you. If, if you have more questions, let me know. I don't mind helping once again. I can help you. Okay. And then the next question is, how do you balance teaching multiple grades? So the way I do it is I do social studies and science together. Uh, we do, so our day starts like this. We do Bible reading. Uh, so that's included right there. So it's reading. And then uh, we do language arts, math, and then we do science and social studies together. So individually we just do language arts and math and then everything else is them together um then another way that i do it too is that while while one of my children are doing an assignment i'm focusing on the other one um this is harder when your children are uh, small but for example, you can set your small child to play or do something fun. Uh, there's a lot of places where they sell like these boxes that already come ready for you. You can set them up and they're learning. You teach them because you don't, with uh, uh, small children, you don't need to spend so much time. You teach them what you need to teach them like in what, three minutes, five minutes, and just reinforce that the whole week, right? So then that's what you do with your children. You start uh, focusing on that, you, you give them that, and then you give them a time for uh, educational play while you're dealing with the oldest and their assignment. Um, so that's kind of how you balance uh, teaching uh, multiple grades, uh, un uniting subjects where they can be united in. And um, when you unite subjects, of course, the oldest one, the oldest one needs more work than the little, right? So that's where you kind of have to balance things out and um, and explain to your children how it will work. Uh, not explain to your children. I'm sorry. Uh, so you you understand for yourself how it will work. So I have uh, enjoyed this. I hope that you get to see the video. I did see my people come in and then go and some people did stick around for a while, but I hope that you um, see the video and that it will be helpful for you. And if you have more questions, I'll be doing this live often so I can help you. Um, don't hesitate to message me if you have any more questions. Uh, if you wanna talk about charters, I do plan to do a live about charters and how that works here uh, in California. And uh, I also, if you have questions even about PSAs, BSPs, whatever is it that you want to focus on, I also can help you with that. I'm grateful that you're here and I hope that you share my page. Um, I know there's a lot of new homeschooling families and some uh, accidental, right? Accidentals are COVID-19 families. Uh, then you do need help with the parenting part and things like that uh, when you mix bo both, okay? When you mix both, it's, it's difficult sometimes because your children are not 
uh, ready for you to be the teacher, um, and especially if they're being in a public school. So remember, if your children have been in a public school and right now you're homeschooling, you have to do school first. Um, and that means doing fun things with them. Now, I know that right now we're limited, but I said do a lot of projects with your children. Do a lot of things that you can enjoy together with your children and enjoy them. Um, enjoy the process. Enjoy this time that of everything that is going on. Enjoy it with your children. And uh, you have never, I've never seen families being so united before. Um, so this is the wonderful thing right now. Uh, so dedicate the time that they need. Um, and let me know if you guys would like me to do another live. Um, I hope I can get you guys to comment because that's the hardest part here on this page. But yes, comment, let me know what you you want to know and I'll bring it to you, okay? Uh, take care, have a good day, enjoy uh, your weekend and I hope you uh, loved it. Bye-bye. Um, so I, in my channel, I want, I'm going to talk about different things and I would like you to join me and not to forget to press the subscribe button so you can help me to um, help other people. At the same time, I am able to uh, provide the information that some people may not have. So, or you could get more um, information uh, for you, for yourself. Um, so don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to put like to my videos. Don't forget to help me um, and all these things. Thank you. Bye.